Hey, Engage Church, it's Pastor B, and I just want to tell you whether you're watching on YouTube, Facebook, or our church online platform, we are so glad that you're here. And if you're enjoying these messages and they're inspiring you, could you do us a favor? Could you subscribe or maybe even start a watch party? Let other people know in your community what you're so excited about every single Sunday. It's going to totally make a difference, not just in your life, but in the lives of others. Hey, we love community here. In fact, we've made it our mission to make sure that we're still connected connecting in community, even through the middle of all of this. And so here's what we'd love for you to do. Why don't you go on our website at engagechurch.org, hit the connect tab, and you could join a virtual community group. We're calling them house parties, but really they're via Zoom. And I'm telling you, they're happening Monday through Friday at various different times. We just want to see you continually staying connected. Although we might be socially distancing, it does not mean that you have to do life in isolation. We really believe in the mission of our church is to see people grow, lives transformed, and communities impacted through the hope of Jesus Christ. We would love for you to join us and partner with us in that mission. We made it really easy. You can just text 240-434-0761, the number right at the bottom of the screen, any dollar amount, and we will partner together in taking this message, hopefully around the globe. Hey, I really hope you enjoy today's message. Hey, Engaged Church, I am so excited to be with you this morning. Listen, understand that we are in the middle of some unprecedented times. I get it, but what I wanted to do was just provide a sense of normality. Let's get back to normal. And so I'm going to actually start a series in the middle of all of this, and we're going to call it Strong Faith. You know, every single week I ask you guys, how's your faith? And I'm sure some of you guys just said it's strong. Maybe you haven't been with us for long. You just started watching us. And uh, I want to give us the opportunity for all of us to be on the same page. And so when I ask, how's your faith? You respond strong, strongly. Now, the only way this is going to work is if you will wake up the people in your house by saying strong. I mean, shake the walls. If they got some eggs on that fork, make it drop. We're going to say, how's your faith? And you're going to say strong, strongly. You ready? How's your faith? Strong. Absolutely, man. Listen, here's what I know. The reason why we ask that question is because our feelings do not dictate our faith. Our faith dictates our feelings. And we live in a culture and we live in a climate right now where there's this heightened sense of fear. There's this heightened sense of anxiety. And some people are even borderline depressed. And so what we have to do in these moments is remind ourselves that we are people of faith. But here's the deal. Faith comes by hearing, but so does fear. And so in this climate, you got to be very careful that your belief system does not get hijacked. And the way that it'll get hijacked is by what you decide to listen to, by what you decide to surround yourself with, what news are you immersing your soul in. You have to monitor all of that because what I'm wanting to do over the next couple of weeks is get your faith stirred in believing that God still performs miracles and he still puts things inside of our heart that he wants us to go after him for. And so I'm going to ask you again, how's your faith? Strong. Absolutely. Now here's what you got to know, right? The buzzword for our community right now is safe. That's the buzzword. And so everyone wants you to have a safe environment uh, in which we should. They want us to have safe practices of washing our hands and wearing our mask and, and wearing gloves, which we should. And I am participating in all of that. They want to make sure that we're staying safe at home. And I'm participating in all of that. And I am not uh, in any way telling you to disregard those things. What I am telling you, though, is that there is an element of faith that is risky. And what I am going to teach on today is this thing called risky faith. But here's what I'm telling you. Uh, do not use this as an opportunity to go out there without practicing the safe guidelines of the CDC. That is not what this is about. But what I do want to do is introduce you to a woman in Scripture who had some risky faith. And I believe in times like this, that's the kind of faith that God is looking for. So let's go to Luke chapter number eight. 
we're going to pick up right at verse number 42. It says, for he had only one daughter, about 12 years of age, and she was dying. And as Jesus went, the people pressed around him. And there was a woman who had a discharge of blood for 12 years. And though she had spent all her living on physicians, she could not be healed by anyone. I think Luke is kind of funny there because if you read this in, in other gospels, it says that uh, she could not be healed by any doctors. But Luke was a doctor and so he didn't want to throw himself under the bus. So you get the verse 44 and says, she came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment and immediately her discharge of blood ceased. And Jesus said, who is it that touched me? And when all denied it, Peter said, Master, the crowd surround you are, are pressing in on you. But Jesus said, someone touched me, for I perceive that power has gone from me. Can I tell you that the power of Jesus is still working and it is still running through this environment, whether or not you believe it or not, uh, you need to know that the power of God is still there. In verse 47, it says, when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him, declared in the presence of all the people that she had touched him and how she had been immediately healed. Verse 48 says, and he said to her daughter, your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Now, listen, in these eight verses, there's a lot going on. Right. But what you have is you have a woman here who has a serious issue. She has menstrual bleeding and it's been there for 12 years. Scripture lets us know that she spent all of her money and she went to go see every doctor she could. And there was no hope. There was no healing. It'd be one thing if this just lasted for a couple of days. It'd be one thing if this was just a couple of months or even a couple of weeks, one year, two years. No, this thing was going on for 12 years. And what has happened is that her community has begun to identify her by her issue. Let that sink in. And because I understand we got a lot of perfect people watching and we got a lot of people with their halos watching. But if you've ever been someone who's been identified by that thing that you struggle with, then this will resonate. It's not that this woman wasn't trying to get better. It's not that she wasn't trying to get whole or be made well, but yet she's being identified by the thing that she struggles with the most. Maybe you've been called a liar. Maybe you've been called an alcoholic or paranoid, and it's not that you don't care. You're doing everything you can. And so this woman is now being labeled by the thing that she's trying to overcome, but she just can't figure out how to do it. And what it's doing is it's causing her great embarrassment. It's causing her great shame. She's become a social outcast. And the reason why is because she has been deemed ceremonially unclean. And what that means is this, that whatever she touches, is unclean. So if she was to touch these flowers, these flowers would now be unclean. If she was to touch these ta this table, this table would now be unclean. And here's what's worse, that if you were to touch anything that she touched, then you would be considered unclean. And because of this, they have told her she is not allowed to come in public. She is not allowed to be around any type of crowds at all. Her family is not even able to embrace her. Can you imagine the life that this woman is having to live? In all intensive purposes, she's being quarantined. But here's what's happening. And I think this is so amazing is that in the, in the process of all of this, she's become desperate. And her desperation prevents her from having pity on herself. Her desperation prevents her from getting down in the dumps on herself. You see, I think every now and then, God will allow desperation to be an invitation for change. And what I think happened was in the middle of this woman's desperation, she gets a, 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 a buzz, a, a tweet, an a Instagram di direct message. She gets something to figure out. She says, wait a second, Jesus is coming here? Jesus is coming in the town? But the problem with it is that if she was going to meet Jesus, it was going to take a risk of faith. And in fact, that's my first point. Faith is risky. Faith is 
risky. Let me explain. Jesus was coming into town, but he was going to be in public. This woman was not allowed to go in public. Jesus was going to be in town, but Jesus had this propensity uh, that wherever he went, huge crowds gathered. This woman was not allowed to be in huge crowds. So if this woman was going to get healed, then it was going to take her risking it all because she's going to now have to go where she was not supposed to go anymore. You see, if this woman was going to be healed, it was going to take her saying, you know what? I got to do something that I'm really, I don't even know if this is supposed to be happening because I've been banned. I've been an outcast. But I think she started thinking, wait a second. The only reason why I'm outcasted in the first place is because I have this issue. But if I go to Jesus and he heals the issue, then maybe, just maybe, all of this will blow over. Here's what I started thinking about. I believe that this woman said, um, I am, or I have enough faith to take the risk because she determined that the reward that God had for her was greater than the risk that she had to take. And I wonder what risk in your life you have not taken because you felt like the reward that God had for you wasn't great enough. I wonder if there is a, a, a something in your life that you have chosen not to go after because you've been afraid to take the risk. Uh, I'm not saying that, that you should defy the orders of the CDC. What I am saying is how come you haven't written a book yet? What I am saying is how come you haven't started house hunting again on Zillow? What I am saying is, how come you haven't tried to start the business yet? You know what I believe? I believe that the reason why many of us don't take the faith risk that God puts in our heart is for the same reasons that this woman could have allowed herself not to go in public. The fear of the crowd and the fear of being exposed. The fear of the crowd and the fear of being exposed. See, I believe that sometimes we don't go after the things that God has placed in our heart because we're afraid of what people are going to say. We're afraid of what people might think. We're afraid of, of what, how will they perceive me. Or if it's not that, sometimes we're afraid of exposure. We're afraid that if we go after this thing that God has placed in my heart, what happens if I fail? What happens if I I really find out that I'm not as smart as I thought I was. See, I think sometimes we allow the fear of exposure or we allow the fear of, of, of what people might think to prevent us from going after what God has placed in our heart. But if God has placed it in your heart, then you got to do everything in you to take the risk and go after it because faith is risky. But here's the second point. The risk is in the reach. The risk is in the reach. Showing up in front of Jesus was not what was going to heal this woman. Her just making a FaceTime appointment with Jesus, that wasn't what was going to heal her. You see, if this woman was going to be healed, she was going to have to reach and touch the hem of his garment. But here's the deal. For 12 years, she's taught herself not to reach. For the last 12 years, she's restrained from reaching. Why? Because when I reach, I would be ridiculed. When I reached, things were ruined. When I reached, I was reprimanded. For the last 12 years, I've been told and, and, and I've found out that whatever I touched was now unclean. And so the difference was that this time, that if she was going to get the healing that God had for her, she was going to have to do something she's been telling herself not to do for 12 years. And here's where this gets deep. I wonder what risk you have not taken because... Hear me, you've told yourself the same lie or excuse for the last 12 years of your life. You've told yourself over and over that this won't work, 
because I'm a failure. Well, this won't work because nothing I do ever pans out. You've told yourself, you've rehearsed the same story and the same scenario of what if over and over and over again for the last 12 years. And you're finding that now that it's time for you to go after the thing that God wants you to go after. You, you, you've been such in the mode of restraint that you've given up on reaching for the things that God has for you. You know, I started thinking about it. Uh, what's, what's interesting about a reach is that you only reach for things that you're certain about. Think about it, think about it. Let's, let's break this down to the most basic scenario. Your refrigerator. <laughs> I'm a foodie. And so I go in that refrigerator about 29,000 times a day, right? And, and here's what I started thinking about, that when it comes to that refrigerator, you open up the refrigerator, you look with your eyes, you make a decision with your eyes, but you reach with your hands. But you will not reach until you've decided with your eyes what you want. More importantly, you will close the refrigerator door before you reach. And what I believe is happening is that so many of us are allowing the doors of opportunity to close in front of us because we're afraid to reach in faith. What are you going after? You gotta make up in your mind that although we are in some of the most crazy times that we've ever seen, I'm still gonna reach for things in faith that God has placed in my heart. Two things will keep you reaching. Here's the first, the fear of the unknown. Will this work? Will I be accepted? How will I be perceived? All these are questions that we ask ourselves when it comes to trying something in faith. Here's the second one. The shame of your past. See, some of us have so much shame in our past or we've had so many times where we've failed in the past or maybe some of you say, I got so many regrets that I've done in the past, that you've disqualified yourself from any decent future. And I want to tell you that that is a lie from the pit of hell. God will not hang your past over your head to disqualify you from an amazing future. If he has put it in your heart, then you need to go after it in faith. You see, because when this woman reached this time, when this woman say, you know what, I'm going to take this leap of faith and I'm going to reach for the hem of his garment. When she did it this time, it was a remedy for her issue. And I wonder what in this season of your life could you reach for? Maybe you're reaching for your marriage. Maybe you'll reach for your children. Maybe you'll reach for the business opportunity. Maybe you'll reach for a deeper and more thriving relationship with God. What will you reach for in this season? Because when this woman took a risk and reached, look at what, what uh, Jesus said to her in Luke 8, 48. He said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your faith has made you well. Listen, I understand that we are, some of, uh, we are in some of the most unprecedented times in our lives. But can I tell you this? It is not a vaccine from COVID that is gonna make your soul well. You know what's gonna make your soul well? Having this unchanging, unmoving, unwavering faith that God is for me, that God loves me. I talked to you about this last week, that he's for me that he loves me and he still desires for me to believe him for great things. So here's the question I have for you. What are you believing for in this season? I'll tell you what I'm believing for. Like never before, I am believing that God is gonna provide for us our own physical space. I believe that. Yeah, so much, I'm bugging my realtor or our realtor as a church almost every other day. Hey, you seen this space? You seen this space? What are they talking about? What's the price of this? You think this price is going for a square foot? It's going to go down? You know what else I'm doing? I am rehearsing in my mind, walking around that building that God's going to give to us. I've been to closing on, on that building already. I have sat in the auditorium of that building already. What is that called? That's called reaching by faith 
in my mind. So what are you going to do? Yeah, I'm talking to you. What are you going to do? Some of you, as soon as this message is over, you should get on Zillow right now and say, God, what house is out there for me? Some of you right now, as soon as this is over, you should pull out your laptop and you should start working on the book. Some of you, you want to see some, some real crazy faith? I mean, real crazy faith? Some of you right now should go on whoever you bank with and open up a business account in the middle of all of this. Some of you should go get that name trademarked right now because this is an opportunity to reach in faith. Hey, faith is risky. But I'm telling you that if you'll trust God, you hear me? If you'll trust God in times like this, your faith will make you well. So do not allow this to be a season where you shrink back. Do not allow this to be a season where you cave in and you quit. No, no, no. You need to build that faith up in you. Turn that CNN off. Turn them news channels off. Get in that word and say, God, I'm going to believe you for something great on the other side of this because this is the environment for miracles. This is the environment for manna Fasted faith. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to take the risk of faith and we're going to start to reach. Hope you enjoyed that. Can I pray for you? God, I just thank you so much for being so good, for being so amazing, so loving, so awesome. God, I pray that in this moment that you will build our faith up. We choose to throw off every single anxiety and worry and sense of doubt and we know that you'll be with us we know that we can put our faith in you amen hey i really hope you enjoyed that message let me tell you here's one of the best things you can do today and i mean this is give your life to christ man we have been praying that during this time that we would have an abundance of salvation so abundance of people saying, God, what must I do to be saved? And maybe you've been listening for the last couple of weeks and you're like, man, you know what? I think I want to take the next step in my journey with God. And I don't even know what that is. It's pretty simple. It's just inviting Jesus into your life. You know, uh, I know I said turn off CNN, uh, but every now and then I will admit I do watch it. And what I've seen is that that death toll is rising every single week. And the first thing I think about is, man, I hope those people know Jesus. And so if you're listening today, you have a wonderful opportunity to ensure that you will spend the rest of your life in heaven. And it's so simple. All you got to do is repeat these words. God, today I give you my life. I believe in my heart and confess in my mouth that you are Lord. Hey, if you prayed that prayer, if you made that statement, won't you just do us, just do us a favor email amen at engagechurch.org. We would love to reach out to you and say hello. Hope you enjoyed the message. I'll see you next week. I really hope you enjoyed that message. Won't you continue the conversation? We've made that pretty simple here. We're connecting all throughout the week in which we're calling house parties. They're really just Zoom calls, but won't you hop on? We have Zoom calls happening Monday through Friday. Pick a day, pick a time, and it'll be an amazing experience for you. You know, the scripture says in Luke 6, 38, give and it shall be given back to you. Press down, shaking together, running over, he'll give to the same measure in which you have gave. And I want to tell you, you are such a generous church. And as a matter of fact, you're upping your generosity in this time, and we couldn't thank you more for it. So would you continue to partner with us? Won't you just text the number at the bottom of the screen, 240-434-0761. Any dollar amount, it's all appreciated. Now here's what I wanna do. I wanna pray over your finances today. So God, I ask that as people are giving in this moment, Father, I pray that you will bless them bountifully. Oh God, that as we give in the time of need, and so many others are hurting, that you will put back into our bosoms what we have given out. We thank you so much. I declare and decree that this year still will be the best year of your life. Hope you enjoyed that word. I look forward to seeing you next week.